Hello, everyone. Welcome, students and alumni. My name is Steve Kligerman. I'm a career consultant at the Center for Career Development, and I am thrilled to host this special event uh, in conversation with three incredible um, art and art history alumni. Today, we'll have the opportunity to hear about their career journeys and how their experiences and lessons learned may help our current and future students. We've prepared a few questions in advance, but we would also love to have questions from our virtual audience. Please type in any questions that you have for our panelists in the chat window, and we'll ask those questions towards the end of the event. At the conclusion of this program, students will have the option to join one of our panelists in a breakout room for the chance to do a little bit of networking. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce today's panelists. First up, we have Erin Lee Bohammer, a graduate of 1994 and a teacher and owner of Paint Sip Fun. We also have Alyssa Kritzman, a 2014 graduate and a UI UX designer at SSNC Technologies. And finally, we have Dan Chen, 2007 graduate, who is a hardware experience designer prototyper for input exploration at Oculus Facebook Reality Labs. Welcome to the three of you and thank you so much for joining us today. We're excited to hear about your career journeys and experiences. So let's get started. Um, we will start with Erin, um, but please each of you answer this question. We'll go around. Um, can you describe what you do in your current position and a bit about your company? Sure. So hi guys, my name is Erin. I am the owner, founder, and principal artist of Paint Sip Fun. It's a traditional paint and sip company that um, I started about eight years ago with that business and it's been an amazing journey. Uh, I also currently am an art teacher at a public school in uh, Ware, Massachusetts. So I'm borrowing an administrator's office at the moment. If you hear littles in the background, it's just the kids um, going back and forth from lunch and recess. So sorry about that. So that's a little bit about um, my where I am currently. The journey took me many other places, but um, that's my current two jobs that I work. Can I answer your question? Excellent, yes, okay. and we'll get, we'll get into those other ones a little bit later in the panel. Right. Alyssa, how about you? Sure, um, hi, I'm Alyssa. I'm a UI UX designer at SSNC Technologies, um, which is a global FinTech company, if you're unfamiliar. In my role, I specifically work on the fund services portal, um, which, uh, we maintain the framework of essentially it houses many integrated applications and products. You can kind of think of it as Netflix and then you have all the different categories and movie types. Um, and I, my role specifically is to help those product teams adhere to our design standards. So there's really a seamless experience for our users. Um, and to that front, I also um, conduct and collect feedback from users um, I hold interviews and then um, everything that I um, collect from them really helps inform any updates and portal releases. Um, on the side as well, I am a freelance designer and I work a lot with nonprofits. That's kind of my niche in that um, area for that. Um, and yeah, happy to be here. And Dan, how about you? Um, I work at Oculus and uh... I make a lot of uh, prototypes and uh, to the initial concept from uh, conception to shipping for Oculus. And I work closely with the industrial design team on uh, the form factor, uh, the lighting and uh, a different user experience in terms of hardware and also how that integrates with the, our software platform. Uh, yeah, just a lot of playing around with hardware and a little engineering, a little design, uh, a little bit of everything. Yeah, uh, system design as well. So it's a, a lot of fun. <laughs> Excellent, thank you so much. Um, all right, so for this next question, I would love to know how you got to where you are now. Um, can you talk us through what steps you took to get to your current position? You know, How did you get the job, but then also what was the path from when you graduated at UConn to where you are now? And Alyssa, if you wanna start on this one. Oh, sure. Uh, so I've taken many 
paths and journeys to get to where I am. Um, during school summers, I held internships um, and I also happened to work at the career development office at UConn uh, for about a year and a half. Um, but after graduating, I got a web design internship at Design Within Reach in Stanford. Um, so I got to learn the ins and outs of how an e-commerce team works and um, really immerse myself in industrial design for the first time, which was another aspect of the field that I wasn't really familiar with um, during school. Um, and, you know, I, it wasn't always rosy. I, I was hoping to land a full-time job from that, um, but they ended up going with someone that had more editorial experience. Um, and so I held out for a couple of months. I was applying everywhere. And there's a wonderful recruiter, Carl Hine, um, who's based in Sono in South Norwalk. And he helped me get a, a secure job at Alexander Isley in Reading, Connecticut. Um, and that was kind of a dream studio job. I got to work on some really phenomenal projects with him. Uh, his team is amazing. And um, from there, I decided to get more into, um, I wanted a mix of in-house and agency life. And I landed at Prosec Partners, which is based in Fairfield, Connecticut. And they have a few other offices throughout. And ironically enough, I'm, I was during just a short story, I was um, at the interview and I'm sitting across from this gentleman. It turned out I met him at a career fair at UConn um, several years prior. And I'd applied for a design internship there um, for one of the summers. I had already, it just didn't work out. The timing wasn't right for either of us. And um, so here I was <laughs> now sitting in their office, kind of full circle moment. Um, and so I worked there and got to work on client projects. Uh, their focus is financial PR. Um, so I worked on branding projects for various clients, a lot of which are based in Hartford um, and also overseas in London. And then I got into new business presentations, which then led me to um, being reached out by a recruiter at Fleischmann Hillard, which is uh, a global PR company. Um, and I got to um, make the leap, go to New York City. I was doing this crazy five hour commute from Connecticut, but I was very determined to make it work. And um, I was there for about a year and a half working on a global new business team, um, working for various Fortune 500 companies, pitching to all sorts of clients. Um, and this was a really neat position because I got to um, design PowerPoints, which don't seem that exciting, but when you're trying to make them not look like PowerPoints, uh, that challenge to me uh, was a lot of fun. Um, and providing clients with that overall experience. What does that room look like? What, do, what does the business pitch feel like um, to really sell ideas? Um, and then for personal reasons, after about a year and a half from that, I um, ended up at SSNC to be closer home in Connecticut um, and, um, and have been here ever since. Awesome. Thank you so much. And, and what a great free plug for the career fair. The networking yeah. <laughs> turned out to be years later, but glad, glad that worked out for you. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Dan, how about you? Uh, my journey kind of started at UConn. My first job was uh, actually a CRT. I was a uh, like graphic designer. My first job was crazy. And then from there, I kind of took on like maybe six or seven work study jobs when I was at UConn, uh, working for Jurgensen, working for the conference service, working for web development, and I learned myself like how to do the database, how to do design, how to do all that. And then after that, I uh, went to Morningstar as a financial company because I liked their design and I was interested in finance at the time. And after that, I went to RISD. <laughs> it's like everything's so like not planned, just kind of like following my interests. And you know, at RISD, I learned about design and also digital media. Um, and from there, I want to learn about, more about engineering. I sort of got into robotics and sculpture. And then I was at uh, Media Lab for a while. Um, and then from there, I sort of loving the uh, manufacturing processes. So I went, I, I got into engineering, uh, process engineering. And from there, I, uh, I was approached by this uh, um, CEO of uh, this biotech firm and I was doing uh, manufacturing of bio incubators and reactors and uh, applying my industrial design knowledge there, also design knowledge there. And from there, randomly, they, the Oculus reached out to me. It's like, we need some higher person. So the whole thing was not planned and just kind of like 
go with what I like. Um, yeah, I get bored very quickly. So I just kind of like shift job to job. So um, I didn't have any like, uh, I know like I need to follow like what I like to do, but I re- never have like a plan out my entire career. If you told me that I will end up where I am right now, probably like, I probably like wouldn't even guess it. So um, yeah, just a lot of like, uh, you know, finding what I love and what uh, job will fit me. And I think like for me, uh, my number one priority when I was like, you know, switching positions was like whatever job will make me happy first. And um, yeah, like I don't really, yeah, it's like, like have any plan um, comes to career. It's just kind of like, um, you know, honing my crap, make sure I do the right thing and, um, you know, making sure I get the experience I want and, um, uh, and yeah, just like everything just pans out. Um, you know, if you like really, you know, be like uh, very uh, like homing on your crap and uh, make sure like you are doing what you love and I feel like everything just pans out from there. Yep, that's it for me. Great, and Aaron. Well, uh, my career is a little, <laughs> my path is kind of scattered like you guys. Um, so I graduated, like I said, at 94 um, with a graphic in graphic design. And, but my love was really painting. But I thought back then, um, what can I do with a painting degree? So I didn't trust my instincts. So that's why I got a graphic design degree, but I never ended up using it. Um, I ended up going and being administrative assistant at an architectural firm. I then went and became a personal assistant for an interior decorating firm. So I always stayed kind of in the creative circle in different aspects. Um, After that, I decided to become a mom. So for 15 years, I was a stay at home mom, but just like Dan, I'm bored. I get bored really easily. So I needed to do something. Um, So I kind of started my own little businesses, you know, only making 10 to $20,000 a year, just on the side to have fun while my babies were little. So I did, I sold my uh, fine art at art and craft shows. So yes, I am also a fine art painter. Uh, I have throughout. So I did that. I sold kids clothes. I designed and created and then sold kids clothes at art and crafts store uh, shows. Um, I then created private art classes that I taught kids out of my basement. Um, And that took me probably up until about mid to 2010 ish. I then went into, believe it or not, network marketing. Someone convinced me to go into network marketing, selling weight loss products of all things. Okay. But what that taught me was how to do public speaking, how to read people and how to make sales that way. Cause you can, it's it's interesting. Anyway, I learned a lot of business techniques. Um, Personal development was huge. Um, So I learned a lot in network marketing on that. And that all gave me the instinct and gave me the guts to then open up my own business, um, teaching others how to paint in a really simple, fun way. So that's done. Um, paint Sip Fun was born in 2013 out of just my love of teaching. Now I had a love of speaking um, to take my painting, you know, big time. And um, it's been amazing. I got to the point where I had 30 employees under me. That's how busy we were um, at the heyday back in like 2015 or something. Um, but then, of course, personal stuff happened. I ended up getting a divorce and yada, yada. So I needed to have insurance. And I thought, what can I do? So I became um, an art teacher. So I ke- became an art teacher. I didn't go through the education department at UConn. I went to the fine art department, but I was still able to become a teacher in a public school. I, I just did it at a different. Sorry, that was my bell telling me school <laughs> class is about to start. Um So I came an art teacher um, in a different route. So I only got my certification five years ago, I think. Um, And so I've been doing both ever since. It's now more, uh, less expensive for me to hire someone to work the business during the day while I have this job that pays me pretty good and I get benefits. Um, And then I work paints it fun at night and on weekends. So kind of roundabout way, but yeah, it's creative nonetheless all the way through. (laughs) Excellent. Yeah. Thank you uh, so much the three of you for, for sharing that. Each of you it really seems has had a, a nonlinear path to where you are now and, and learned a lot of things along the way in terms of what you liked, to what you didn't like, and, and that's great. Um, Dan, I know you answered this in your, um, in your response, but I'd love to hear from Alyssa and Aaron as well. Looking back to when you graduated from UConn, would you have ever guessed that you would be where you are now doing the job that you are doing now um, back then when, when you were graduating? Would you, have, would you have ever guessed that? Um, yeah. 
Oh, heck no. <laughs> Not at all. No, I wanted to be a fine art painter straight out, out the gate. Um, and I didn't know how to make that work. So I just kind of stayed around creative jobs as much as I could. Again, started my own because I couldn't find where I was going to fit. And yeah, so here I am. Anyway, go ahead, Alyssa. Sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. I think similarly, I guess we're all kind of get bored and like to hop around. Um, I don't, I can't say like being in UI UX was, I don't even know if this is the end, right? Like I'm still on this journey. Um, but similar to Erin, anything that's sort of just keeping it within the creative field has been enough for me to just kind of propel me to, um, you know, keep plugging along and figuring out what I like, what I don't like. And as long as I'm doing something design related, no matter what in industry it's in, that um, that to me, I feel like is, is kind of uh, my end goal ultimately. Absolutely. All right, so next question. Um, what has been the most challenging part of getting to where you are now? Um, and Erin, we can start with you on this one. Uh, honestly, getting out of my own way. It, it, personal development, I cannot stress that enough for everyone in life, let alone someone who's wanting to jump into the workforce and do what you were propelled to do. Um, follow your gut. Have trust your gut instinct is really what it is. Um, I didn't trust my gut at the beginning that I could do this, that I could paint, that I could teach, that I could share my love of my craft with others in whatever way, shape or form. I was like, eh, well, I don't know, you know, and it wasn't until I started listening to like Tony Robbins or Zig Ziglar or Jim Rohn, those kind of like personal development coaches um, and feeding my mind every single day with the positive things that you don't not necessarily no. So stop things that you don't know that you don't know. Um, getting that kind of information every day that gave me um, the skills and it gave me, again, the gut instinct to, to follow my dreams. So that's, again, my most challenging part was getting out of my head and following my gut and my intuition, my, my soul. So. Dan, how about you? I think the most challenging part is uh, probably uh, explain to the, uh, the recruiter or someone uh, you know what I do uh, really because I I I have like I do system design to engineering to pretty much like the uh, overall power st structure to firmware so what I do doesn't have a good job title uh, like the job title doesn't fit me so like explain what I do is some kind of difficult they have to kind of like look into the portfolio to get a glimpse of what I do and once they hire me, they kind of like, you know, like, okay, this is like what I do. But yeah, it's like communicating what you do and also finding the job that um, fits your job description. It's really, I mean, finding a job that fits like what you do is also very difficult um, because a lot of jobs are like uh, a standard title, like senior engineer or a senior designer. Um, and what that encompasses is like very different than what exactly you do. You probably do more than that. You have more skill than that. Um, so it is kind of hard to like uh, tell someone that exactly what I do uh, through that, uh, no, through a portfolio. And another thing is um, I do a little, I do uh, engineering and design manufacturing. And um, the problem with that is like, who do I, like if I'm talking to a recruiter, I have to shape my portfolio to tailor to that uh, specific uh, field. Um, no, no, understand your audience and shape your portfolio, like delete some uh, boring, um, you know, lines from your CV so that uh, they will like watch those keywords and you now get you higher first and then they figure out what you do later. And yeah, so things like that, um, that tricks I have to play to get around. So it's not like, yeah, it's like a lot of um, titles out there are very rigid and, you know, we learn a lot of things over time. So it's like, it doesn't, sometimes doesn't fit out. So this, this is a bit of a challenge. And Alyssa. Yeah, um, I think to start, as you know, as I've already gone over all the different job titles, like many um, Aaron and, and Dan have had, um, knowing when it's the right time to leave, I'm not someone that's complacent. Um, and so if something doesn't sit right with me, and like Dan said, you are really responsible for your own happiness. If um, the 
the work environment is starting to feel toxic, if the work isn't challenging you, if there isn't a way for you to make a lateral move within the company, or if they don't offer the additional like training, like Aaron mentioned, um, you know, it's okay to make those, those changes and it's going to be scary. And, um, but one step backwards is you're going to be propelled that much more forward. So, um, and fly forward and you're going to land on your feet perfectly fine. Um, so I think that's been the challenge and similar to Dan, especially when you're first graduating your portfolio, um, may not, this a specific problem I had was that recruiters wanted to know what I was interested in, as if I had this idea of like being locked into um, already what I want to be designing. If it's for editorial layouts, like I mentioned at Design Within Reach, my portfolio after graduating, you, you work on all different projects. You may even have, um, right, like fine arts, port, um, uh, like paintings and printmaking pieces that aren't necessarily, necessarily relevant to the job. Um, but like Dan said, figuring out a way to edit and cater to the job description. And, um, you know, if you luck out like I did, it, it worked in my favor working at Alex Isley. It's a studio environment. If anything, being able to have all those different skill sets um, worked in my favor in that situation. So, um, yeah, I think that now, now you kind of learn at this point. Um, like Dan mentioned, how to edit and figure out what you, what your your goals are um, moving forward. So it becomes less challenging over time, but don't get discouraged. <laughs> Absolutely appreciate that um, that honesty about those challenges, and and hopefully our, our current students can can take that uh, to heart as as they move forward. All right, so now thinking back to your time at UConn, um, I would love to know what experience at UConn do you believe was most helpful in preparing you for your future? And Dan, we can start with you. Um, I think it was uh, the, the people, of course, and um, also the uh, sort of experience that the professors would expose me. Um, like they show me uh, how the process works. They, we go on factory tours to see how printing process works. And also like just to learn how to think, like how to organize, how to, uh, you know, like graphic design, but it's like more than that. It's about how to communicate with others with like digestible information and just how to break things down, making people understand that communication skill that I learned from uh, School of Fine Arts was like extremely valuable just like empathize with um, you know, how people would see your information, how they would read it and how you design it. And uh, yeah, really like honing, honing on like, how are the strategies that you can come up with to help people understand uh, your point? Or um, yeah, just like, uh, and also different methods as well. Um, they offer like web courses and also of course like the, the print. And uh, yeah, they really helped me how to like, no, communicate with others. I still use that every single day. Like communication in any job is the key and you can make it pretty easy, digestible. Um, no, either on Instagram or Facebook or uh, oh, no, or just like presentations, it's like super helpful. Um, yeah, and they just like show me sort of how, uh, how your peer could help you. Um, and also like, no, networking as well, like my, uh, I was freelance for a little bit and then a lot of my friends just got me like a lot of freelance job because you know I know how to do database and web design. So yeah, so it's definitely helpful. Like like any part, yeah, just like yeah, all the way, like everything is like super uh, helpful, like from people to resources to professors. Uh, yeah, that's it for me. Thank you, Erin. Um, the techniques of fine art is really the most I got out of UConn for what I'm currently doing. Again, I'm more of the hands off the computer, you know, hands in the dirt and paint and everything. I mean, literally I was teaching last night, I still have paint on me. Um, so all of the teachers, the professors, um, with technique of painting, with color theory, with, I mean, all of it, drawing everything. So really those foundational fine art classes is what I needed to refine my technique and develop my confidence as an artist. Now, yeah, I had some skill. I was born with it. I'm born into a family of artists. So that's all well and good, but 
it was the professors that really gave me that, yeah, that's a really good job. And I had one professor, I don't think she's there anymore in painting that said, you know what, you really could do this and you're better than my graduate students right now. And that was in painting 101. Um, so my critique with her, and she was one of the toughest teachers too. So that gave me, like I said, confidence. So the really what helped me the most today, looking back, and again, it was what, 30 so odd years ago. I'm, kind of the oldest one here, but um, it was, it was the, it was the faculty for sure. They, they had a big impact on me. And Elsa. Yeah, I think something that um, is unique about UConn is the fact that SFA is a smaller school amongst a huge community. And the reality is on the day-to-day -day, I'm working with people that don't speak the same language as me uh, in terms of design and the color theory and the, the knowledge that we have. Um, and so I think that experience as a whole from UConn is really unique. Um, you know, I think at, at the time I hated taking gen ed classes, but looking back um, in the day-to-day, -day, since I have had to work in so many different fields from communications, healthcare, FinTech, hospitality, e-commerce, I need to have at least a, a, a high level understanding of all of those things. Um, and as Dan said, how to communicate to stakeholders um, really articulate your ideas clearly. So um, yeah, just to echo what everyone else has said, really the professors were amazing um, and tap, tap them, you know, even after you've graduated, they're there to help you um, and your peers too. I've commissioned my friends who are really talented illustrators or people that were in grades below me, even if I wasn't friends with them, but I've seen their work um, and photographers, or I have a friend that's really great at coding. And, you know, if I have questions for her, I, I'm, you know, she's a phone call away. So um, it really goes back to the people and the, the network that we have. Excellent. All right, we have a few more questions here. Um, just a reminder for our audience members, if you have questions of your own, feel free to submit those in the chat and we'll be addressing those uh, in just a couple of minutes. Uh, but my next question here, and, and we'll start with you, uh, Alyssa, um, what do you wish you knew as a student surrounding career or career preparation, knowing what you know now? Yeah, I think I wish I knew um, the reality of in the day to day, how some days you can be super busy and may, you may feel overwhelmed. You're obviously, you're gonna survive it. Um, and then on the flip side, when work is slower, um, really kind of enjoy those quiet times to recharge. Um, or if you don't have an impending deadline, use that downtime to learn a new skill set, um, or do something for yourself, go to a conference. There's so many available virtually now um, because when you start having so many deadlines, um, for, from my experience, you know, inspiration isn't necessarily going to strike. So come up with tactics that kind of help you um, break, break out. And if you do get in those ruts, um, I also think when you're looking for a job on the practical side, ask those questions about benefits um, and the work environment, because the work that you produce is going to be reflective on how your company is treating you. If their values don't align with yours, um, I think that for me, that's something that's important. Um, when I was at ProSec, they offered actually um, a couple of hours each month for you to do volunteer work. So I used that time to build my own uh, pro bono freelance on the side to work with nonprofits, things that I was passionate about. Um, so I think just seeking out companies that um, have that offering. The other thing, um, and I'll end with this and let everyone else talk. Um, if you do aspire to travel or live elsewhere, I think seeking out companies that have multiple offices, you'll be able to make lateral moves that way. That way, if you do enjoy working where you are, you don't necessarily have to leave. And I know everyone's a lot more flexible now with remote working, um, but if that is something that's important to you, um, that's just um, something I wish I knew uh, getting into it all. Dan, how about you? Um, I think like when you just like graduate, you want you're looking for a job, you can just like you know with, you want to take like any job that comes by, comes by you. So I would just be like very careful about what you pick and choose uh, because they oftentimes they probably don't have the best interests of like on you. It's like they just want to make money off you. 
So I'll be very careful. Unfortunately, I have uh, professors that help me review the offerings and uh, they were like, this firm is just like, do your research before you, yeah, uh, go into the firm uh, or like uh, a, 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 a corporation or whatever. Um, yeah, just like, you know, don't be like, I need the money now and I need a job right now. Don't, don't rush into it. You know, think about how that will have impact on your overall, overall career, even though know, sometimes it might pay, pay more, but uh, or less, it might, you know, but make it you like more experience. I was like working at the Economist Group in New York. <laughs> it's, it's like they are, they pay very little, but they have like, a, you know, they have a good, very good uh, staff they can learn from. Like depending on you know, pros and cons, you kind of have to like figure out, um, you know, what you want to learn uh, versus uh, like you know, how much money we make because eventually, I mean, if you say your priority, like if you if the, your goal is making money, I think you will make money. And if your goal is to learn, you know, you will learn. But you know, how that impacts your overall sort of um, career, so you know, kind of have to figure that out. Um, yeah, just like be more selective. Um, yeah, that's it. Excellent, and Aaron. Well, kind of just to piggyback what Alyssa and Dan have said. Um, really have a coach is what I wish I knew back then, um, and I did learn this through personal development. I'm gonna nail that until you guys are sick of it. But seriously, I'm um, getting your mindset right and having a personal coach of some sort, whether it's a pro former professor, whether it's a colleague, whether it's someone have someone in your corner that has been there, done that, you know, do what they do, you'll get what they get. So look for people in your life, in your circle, in your networking, wherever you can um, to help guide you and review the offers like Dan was saying. Those are really good points. So don't just jump at the first thing. Really look at what they're offering and it doesn't align with your values and who you are and what you want to do. Um, having a coach for me, again, it, it was my aunt was my coach and she's also a professional artist. She's also, she's a professor of art. She just retired. Um, so I kept going to her all the time saying, what do you think of this? Or what's that? Or, you know, cause I'm more of the fine art field. So she was too. So I went to her a lot. It's very, very, very important to have at least one person, if not many to go to, to bounce ideas off of. And I wish back then I really knew it. I didn't lean on her enough back then. Now I do all of the time, the older I get, the more I lean on her. Um, and it's just, again, to, to make sure you're staying in alignment with who you are as a human being. Cause if you don't, you're, it's just going to suck the life out of you and it's not worth it. Not worth it. So, yeah. I think that's a great point you make that, you know, you have not, as a student, you have not gone through this process yet. So you don't know everything that you should know. And so use those people around you, use the Center for Career Development, use your professors and advisors, use your friends that graduated a year or two before you, use everyone that you can that's within your network to help give you the knowledge that you need because people have lived this, have learned from it. And then, you know, that's that's really the, the point of this panel as well as we have three people who have been through the program that our current students are in and and now they can share those experiences that that helped them get to where they want to be. And just to add to that, Steve, um, you don't have to be at a networking event, right, to make a connection. You can yeah. be anywhere and um, and I think that's really important to understand if, if you are someone that is shy, don't be afraid to send an email or a message online. Or if you're, you know, I've been in Ubers and my Uber driver one time in LA used to design pins for NASA that astronauts wear, like what are just through conversation. So, um, be open to, to networking in non-traditional ways, I guess. Absolutely. And so now my, my final question for you and, and kind of similar to what we were just speaking about already, um, what advice would you have for a student or a recent graduate that is looking to do something really similar to what you are doing now? Erin, um, we can start with you. All right. I wrote down four things. All right. <laughs> One, never stop creating. No matter what kind of creation it is, we all are creative individuals. Our souls cry out to 
create something, whether it's writing, whether it's reading, you know, whether it's cooking, decorating your house, making clothes for your kids. Um, if we can't do what we love to do, like for me, it's painting. If I can't get to that, I'll make sure that I make a really cool looking cake, you know, for my mom's birthday. Um, going out and gardening, just something. So never, ever, ever stop. Do something creative every day because trust me, there's been a few times in my life where I didn't and I was so depressed. It was obnoxious. Like it was, it was horrible. Once I started back into the creative mode, I felt much better. Um, so that's number one, never stop creating. Number two, professional development. I'm going to say it again. Um, feed your mind every day. I've kind of talked about it already. I won't reiterate that. Three, if you want to go into any kind of business, you need to kind of gather business skills. Um, networking is one of them. Um, if you don't know, again, get a coach or find someone that you want to be like and emulate them. They've already done it. They've already created the path walk their path. Um, and of course, four, never give up. Set, just never give up. That's all I got for you. <laughs> Excellent. Dan, how about you? Yeah, definitely second that uh, in terms of like uh, cre keep creating. Uh, I also learned that when I was at RISD where uh, you just make a lot of stuff and then you also do critical thinking on top of what you are making. And then this back and forth process sort of help you map understand what your tendencies are, where your intuitions are, and you know, figuring out you as a person, like why you're, in, why you're interested in the things that you're interested in. Uh, yeah, that really helped me in terms of like uh, personal growth and uh, sort of, you know, like understand what I, why I like the things I like to do and, and you know, double down on that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I would just probably just advise like, you know, just do what you like. You're, I think your number one job is to make your mental state like, or make, you know, just make yourself happy first because you are the only one that can take care of you. Like the company that's not gonna care for you. I mean, they are probably gonna put it into, but I feel like your mental state, you know, make sure it's uh, you know, taken care of and uh, make sure you have a job that you like. Not everyone uh, are gonna have the same sort of situation, but make sure you know, everything can be temporary. Maybe you can just like, take a job for two years and no oh, for two years no it's not everything is set and done everything is temporary just like go with the flow and follow sort of what you like to do um and then everything will kind of just like fall in places um a lot of things has to do with time and luck so be patient uh, and also don't get discouraged you might apply for 10 jobs and maybe you will only get like two you know writing you back and some some of the crew are just like hanging around like you know to try to find the right fit but don't I wouldn't worry about it too much or you no know, just like keep keep doing what you're doing and uh, you know make sure you uh, know you know fulfill your interests and uh, yeah have a fulfilling sort of creative uh, sort of uh, life and yeah just uh, you know keep making excellent and Alyssa yeah, uh, definitely echo everything both of them have already said. Um, and just remember, I, of course, this kind of may sound cliche, but it really is your own journey. So really don't compare um, where you are to anyone else. Everyone has their own interests and will kind of navigate and figure out um, ways that work best for them. And if you are stuck in a rut, like they've already said, definitely just create anything uh, to push you through with the only experience you have is babysitting and you're a photography major offered to start taking portraits of the you know family or design holiday cards. There's ways that you can be flexible and um, with your different skill set. So, um, and uh, yeah, like everyone else said, don't be too hard on yourself, really trust the tools that you've been given and um, you'll be just fine. That was some great advice from the, the three of you. I think you made really good points about, you know, this really is a journey. There are a lot of different steps to where you're going to be in your career. And, and so much of it is timing. And I mean, you'll even look at Dan's position um, with Oculus. I'm sure when you graduated in 2007, Oculus was not a thing at all. So you had no idea that that was going to be an opportunity that was available to you later on in your career. So take those steps learn and, and, and go from there. So uh, thank you so much for, for offering um, that advice. Um, so now we're going to move into the question um, and answer session from our audience. So we do have uh, one question and feel free if you do have any questions for our panelists, continue to send those in. Um, our question from Jillian, um, I'm guessing that this is primarily for uh, Alyssa, is can you talk more about your UI UX design job? What is it like day to day? 
Sure. So in the day to day, um, usually my whole team, we have um, developers and a team of QA. Um, and every morning we all get on a morning call. We give uh, updates what we worked on the previous day, what we're working on today. Um, and if there are any obstacles, we work through those and talk about them. Um, and then I, in a typical day, right now I'm currently working on a, the portal refresh, which we do every about every two years. Um, and so I created a presentation um, that I shared with stakeholders and with the full plan strategy. Um, and then I, I also developed within that a questionnaire. So um, as I mentioned earlier, I conducted all those user interviews. Um, we did product testing. Um, and um, then from that information, uh, distilled all of that, created another presentation um, to figure out what our priorities are, what is most important for our users, um, any obstacles that impede them from, you know, doing their job every day. And, um, and so then I will work on wireframing, prototyping, and mapping out any of those problematic areas. Um, and I work a lot in sketch um, in, in envision, um, and, um, and really a lot of iterating and, and meeting with my, um, my, uh, my manager who is also a developer. Um, so it's a lot of like tag teaming and, and working through <clears throat> processes like that really in the day to day. Awesome. All right, so I'm not seeing any other questions. So uh, your last opportunity here to get those questions in. Um, while I do give you a few more seconds to put any last questions in, um, I just want to thank UConn alumni, who is our co-sponsor for uh, this event, along with the Center for Career Development. Um, and thank you to everyone for attending and, and taking their time out of their day to uh, to come to this event. And then, of course, thank you to our amazing panelists. Uh, we really appreciate your time um, and your willingness to share your story and, and really wish you continued success going forward. And, and hopefully uh, this is not the, the last time that, that we get to see you uh, sharing your stories and, and uh, continuing to be a part of the Yukon community. All right, so I'm not seeing any other questions um, other than a, a few thank yous to our panelists. So again, thank you so much. Um, so the final part of this event is um, I will break this into three breakout rooms, uh, each labeled with the name of each one of our panelists. Um, so if you would like to um, connect with them and, and do some networking, um, once I open those up, please just select who you would like to join um, and you can speak with them. But again, thank Thank you so much for everyone attending. Thank you to our panelists and hope everyone has a great day.